Hello everyone, today we are doing the waved rapid strep test and we're trying to identify if a patient has strep throat caused by streptococcus pyogenes, which is group A strep. Um, Another technical term would be pharyngitis uh, caused by this organism. Pharyngitis is a sore throat, uh, a throat infection. And so what we're going to do is identify if that sore throat is coming from the causative agent of strep throat. And so um, I do have a culture plate here and it has the causative agent of strep throat, Streptococcus pyogenes, group A. You'll see that it is beta hemolytic, you can see my gloved hand right through the blood auger plate media. And so it has two hemolysins um, as part of its virulence arsenal, but it also has other virulence factors that, as well that help to cause infections such as strep throat, but it can be systemic as well if you do not catch strep throat. So make sure that if you suspect that uh, your child or a patient has strep throat, that you're making sure to um, do this test. And if you're unsure if the test was correct, you send it out for a culture just like this and we'll test it in the laboratory. Uh, the WAVE test can be done by anyone. It doesn't have to be a trained laboratorian. Um, and always as a follow-up measure, um, send out for a culture to make sure that the results are correct because one of the reasons you can have a false negative is if you did not pick up enough of the actual causative agent. So if the person really does have strep throat um, and you use the sterile swab and you touch the cheek, the tongue, the upper part of the mouth, and you didn't get back to the tonsils or the, the affected area of the back of the throat, then um, it's going to come out negative rapid strep and it's gonna come up a negative culture too. It'll have normal flora on it. <laughs> It'll be contaminated with normal flora, but it's not going to have um, the actual pathogen. So what do you do? You make sure to depress the patient's tongue, make sure to only touch that swab onto the affected tonsils and back of the throat area. It would be very red, could be pussy, could have white colonies on there. All right, so that's what you're looking for and you send it immediately to get this rapid test done or, well, um, or you notice that it's negative and you still want a culture, so you send it out for culture. You get a new swab. Okay, you don't use the same swab that was done on in this rapid test procedure. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow what is on this card. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to label our cartridges because that's very important. All right, so here are the cartridges. Notice that you have... A blue line there, it makes a nice, pretty positive if the patient is really positive. You have a control window here. You have to have a pink line there in order for this to be accurate. Okay, so this is going to be the patient. This is going to be negative QC, and this is going to be positive QC. Woohoo! All right. Um, so, first things first, we use extraction fluid. Extraction fluid is used to liberate the antigen from the bacterial cell wall. Okay, so an antigen is part of the identifying piece of the, um, <clears throat> the cell wall or cell membrane of the organism and it's what causes an immune response. All right, so we've got extraction A reagent. We're gonna add four. I did, I did invert it. I'm trying to do this really quickly. We're gonna put four vertical drops in every single one. So one, two, three, four. We always treat QC just like a patient specimen.
All right, we're gonna follow it up with extraction reagent B. There are um, glass ampules in these bottles, so when you first break it open, um, when you first use the kit, you're gonna need to break it open in order for it to work. This is showing the correct color upon addition of the second reagent. And what's funny is they even labeled it with green, so you'll remember that it's supposed to turn green. You can't use it if it was green before you added it. That would make it inaccurate. All right, so I don't have a patient in here that I suspect of having strep throat. Whoops. I'm pulling it out from the end. I'm not letting the tip touch anything. I'm gonna take it from my pure culture. So this is what my students are gonna be doing in class. We'll take from the pure colonies at the end here. So I've got it on the tip of my swab here and we're gonna put it in the patient one and gonna move it around. I'm twisting it and turning it. It's supposed to be five times. All right, and we're gonna let it sit for a minute. So, start. Okay, these we're going to add the QC to. So, make sure you invert that before you use it as well. So, this is positive QC. One drop is all you need. One vertical drop. Okay, we got one drop there. Negative QC inverting and one vertical drop there too all right so at the end of this what we're going to do is be squeezing out as much liquid as we can out of the tip of the swab in order to make sure we have all the specimen that we need in order to add to the window. Okay, so we're at the end and we'll take this out. Be careful not to spill it everywhere. And so what I'm gonna do is squeeze the tube and pull and twist. So I'm pulling out my, my swab tip and I'm making it so I squeeze as much out of the tip as possible. All right, that goes in the, that goes in the biohazard trash, I've got on my bench top. I'm going to add these little tips to make droppers out of these little guys. This is gonna be great. Whole lot of fun happening here. All right. little dropper there, a little dropper here. And so we're gonna add two drops this time and we're gonna put it into the window, the specimen window. All right, so two vertical drops, good ones. 